welcome back to Alex's Board Game Stand, and today we're going to be looking at another hobby game called Clumsy Witch. And this is a memory slash observation game, so without further ado, let's take a look at this spell binding potion making game. Toil, toil, boil, and what ingredient did we forget this time? Hmm. A lot of them. <laughs> okay, let's show them how to play. <laughs> Okay everyone, so as we always do, first we're going to show you the components and what comes in the actual box. Start off by uh, the rule book here. It was a simple read. This game has a lot more depth than some or most Haba games, so it kept it brief and described it well. Uh, so the first components we'll go over are the cardboard pieces, uh, thick cardboard, nice circles. Yeah, you can see it's about that big, and these are what you put the cauldrons on. Uh, the next cardboard pieces here are the ingredients that you'll be choosing throughout the game when you figure out what is missing from the spell. The next cardboard pieces here are the potions. All this cardboard is nice and thick. Hoppa does a great job every time. Again, I say the same thing when I do a component portion of Hoppa. And this is nice. Oh yeah, this uh, this is the shaker and uh, the cauldron that's going to go in the middle and that's going to um, cover up the dice and what you're going to be rolling the dice out of. So that is a nice plastic. Uh, the next pieces are the wood pieces. So the all the dice are wood, as always in a hobby game, well produced. Why do you, sh you can show them what they Sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, next uh, wood piece, this is Fex, the assistant to the Clumsy Witch, and the actual Clumsy Witch, and it's painted on. It, great, nice, big, chunky wooden bits. And the last portion is the board. Gorgeous. We spend about 10 minutes just looking over all the pictures and what's going on here. I like the art direction that they went in when they did this game. All the components in this game are very nice. So now let's show you how to play. Okay everyone, so just for the sake of easy explanation, we're just going to stick with the basic rules and play the gameplay with the purple dice here. You're going to get a flavor and a feel of how the game plays just by uh, playing the basic rules, though we will go over the advanced dice and the advanced rules later in the video. So, in the start of the game, you determine the first player by doing what, kiddo? Saying the funniest what? Um, spell? spell? Yeah, I like that. Normally we do a dice and we do the funny spell first player determination every time. So we're just going to say you go first. Now on your turn, you are doing such. You're rolling the dice out of the cauldron here, and the other players or player will read off this spell. One, two, three, four, five, six, vex. It seems as if the witch is vexed, but it, what is missing from her brew, count the dots, and the die will tell you. So once they finish that spell, they cover all the dice, or the one dice in this case, and this is where the memory part go, comes into play. Now, the current player has to move the witch mentally in their head four spaces in this case, and figure out what is missing from this, this brew that is in front of her. So if she were to move, she is trying to figure out this potion. So with these tiles, they each have all the pictures of the ingredients in them, but one is missing and one is doubled, which doesn't matter until the advance rolls. So you can figure out what missing ingredient is on the back here by looking at all these and figuring out what is missing. So in this case, it's a sock. So yeah, this one here. So what you do on your turn, once that uh, the dice is covered, is mentally go that many spaces and look and observe what's in the cauldron and figure out what ingredient is missing and grab that ingredient and put it in front of you. So once you've done that, the other players lift up the cauldron there and figure out if you are right. They then will physically move um, the witch, one, two, three, four, and look at the ingredient. Now they don't show it because if it's wrong, you put it back down, not giving the other player, the current player information. But if it's right, they would show that you got the sock ingredient and you were right, flip it back down and you earn a potion. So that is basically how Clumsy Witch is played. I would say she's more forgetful and bad at keeping track of what she's putting in the cauldrons, but hey, we're just gonna stick with that. And you would do this for four turns. Everyone would get four turns apiece. And the person with the most potions 
wins the game. And if it's a tie, it's a friendly tie, all the witches and or wiz wizards win the game. So that is how Clumsy Witch is played in the basic form. So now let's show you the advanced rules and what the other dice do. Okay, so in the rule book, Haba suggests that you add one dice per game until you get the hang of each dice. And then you can um, switch, uh, die out, mix and match, and play with as many dice as you want. This, uh, oh sorry, this is the first dice that they suggest putting in. And this changes direction. Um, you're always playing clockwise with the exception of this dice. The yellow uh, symbol here with the arrow going the opposite way makes the witch go the opposite way and face that way. So she would be facing counterclockwise and she would have to look at this potion and figure out that ingredient. Whereas the white is as normal clockwise. So you can throw that in the game and that adds a little more memory to it. The next one they suggest putting in is the uh, blue dice here and it has two emblems. Um, the witch face means she's looking in front of her and the hat means she's looking behind her. So not only do you have to keep track of the pips, and the direction, if you're playing with this one too, you have to figure out which direction she's going to be looking at for the cauldron. Uh, the last one here is the Fex dice. Now this um, incorporates Mr. Fex here, which again, is a nice meeple painted on. And he does basically everything opposite of Clumsy Witch. Uh, this associates with him. And if you get the, what is it, the moon is Fex. So if you get the moon, you are now moving Fex, but if you get the star, you're moving the Clumsy Witch. The Fex rule is the most complicated, so let's go over that right now. Fex here, uh, you'll be placing him along with the Clumsy Witch at the beginning of the game on any square, and what he does is he does everything opposite. So if he is moving um, four pips, with, with uh, if you just play like this, he will be moving backwards. He always moves backwards from the position, but faces the, uh, in this case, the clockwise, because we're not playing with the orange one, but if we were playing with the counterclockwise, he'd be facing this way, moving backwards, and he is actually looking for the ingredient that appears twice in the cauldron. So in this case, two horseshoes will um, appear, and instead of looking for the ingredient that's missing, he wants to find out what's in there twice. So when you're moving facts, you're moving them backwards, and you're looking um, either behind or in front of you, but you got to do that opposite thing with him again and look for two of the same ingredients and you would just do the same thing as a witch. So that's basically how Fex works. Um, this game, I would say, scales pretty well with difficulty, but for the younger kids, you might want to leave out a few dice and just kind of work with what you have and progress as slowly as they can catch on. So now, Let's show you what we actually think about Clumsy Witch and how we feel. Do you like this game? Don't tell them! Alright everyone, so that was Clumsy Witch. Now, as we always do on Alex's board game stand, we're going to rate this game with either a check minus being a bad game, check being an okay game or a good game, and the check plus being a great game. And with that being said, what are you going to give it, girly? Check plus. Oh, nice. You like this game? So what is the your favorite part about this game? What do you like to do the most? Well, I like two things. Okay. I like getting the potion, yeah. and I like moving this backwards guy. Yeah, yeah, he's something silly, huh? And, uh, yeah, I totally am in, in agreement with that. This game is good for kids. It's going to get their brain working, um, even with adults, with the memory and observation, with the time aspect. It really crunches everything and makes it frantic and you start to panic so like I said before the game scales really good in difficulty so if you're finding this game a little, a little too easy just add one or two dice and it completely turns into a different game I'm gonna give this game a check and it's right on the cusp of a check plus though it's something about the gameplay that just doesn't make me want to bust this one out every time though it's a good game and I'm I'm very happy to play this game just not something that I'm going to throw on the table every time when it comes to a Hava game. But again, her opinion is what matters the most, right? Because that's who they want to shoot for. And yeah, I would say this is a, a good game. It's well built and the theme is really nice. This, this board is just one of my favorite things about this game. Uh, that's what I would say my favorite part about the game is. Look at this little cat in a hat here and a little spine spell hat. Mm, that's Clumsy Witch's cat. 
Oh, it's Clumsy Witch is a cat? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Okay, everyone, so thank you so much for joining us again here on Game Vine and Alex's board game stand. Until next time that we see you, have a great rest of your day and a great time with what? All that you play. I'm Dave from Game Vine. I know. We're out.